Hey guys, so a couple weeks ago I actually got to sit down and have a little Skype call with uh, one of y'all's favorite people, one of my personal uh, best YouTube friends, one of my best friends in general, uh, Zach from Adventures of Zach and B. And uh, basically, I have been wanting to do this collab for a while and finally got on the ball and did it. And it's all about attending colleges in the South. So what it's like being gay at SEC schools. And so basically, I just wanted to like compare notes and see what it was like comparing Mississippi State University to the University of Alabama. And, you know, just kind of seeing what was similar, what was different in our experiences at those places. And so going to dive right into that. And so here is the interview. But yeah, I figured today, like, I just really want to dive into and talk about, like, uh, like, like gay culture in Southern College Town. What was gay culture like when you first got to Bama? Like, did you even know of gay culture in Bama? So when I first got to Bama, um, there wasn't even, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know any out gay guys. Um, I'm sure there were some, but the people I was, I was hanging around, you know, there were no out gay guys in our group, mm -hmm. and we didn't really associate with out gay guys. I'm not proud to say that, but, you know, I definitely adapted the mindset of, you know, uh, we're not going to hang out with, you know, gay guys who are out and who are proud and all that. And so, um, you know, Icon's been around since I did an interview with Kyle, the owner of Icon. Um, I've talked to him a few a few times, and uh, I did an interview with him, and he told me Icon's been around for, for a long time. And so... Uh, I was I was really surprised because I'd never heard of it, and I'd been all around Tuscaloosa. The first time I ever went to Icon was 2015, so I was in my junior year, and yeah. before that, you know, I'd never heard of it. I'd never seen it. I guess I'd probably passed it, but um, oh. it was just never something that I knew was out there because I, did, I didn't have interactions with other gay guys. And on Grinder, the only interactions people would have were hookups. No, I mean, there, there, there really wasn't any sort of, when I first got there, there, there was um, a sort of gay culture in Tuscaloosa. I do want to make that very clear that there are gay people in Tuscaloosa and there's a lot of them and a lot of them hang out and a lot of them are out. And like, like when I met Trent, um, he's really who started introducing me to other gay people. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I didn't go to Icon with him for the first time, but he and I started going to Icon more, and uh, like that's really where I started, like you know, saying, like, "Wow, I'm really surprised that there's you know, gay people who are out here and who really you know don't care so much." Because uh, I think that's a big misconception is that, and in Southern college towns, it's so hushed hushed. Um, but it's not always like that. There are, you know, just like with everywhere, there's sections that are very hush hush, and then there are sections of the town that are, you know, a little bit more out and proud about it. In Starkville, like when I first got here, I was like, I'm like the only gay person I know here. Like, that's great. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was just like trying to, like, I lucked out and one of my first roommate was gay. So, like, that was like a blessing in disguise. Yeah. But um, we have, like, we don't have a gay bar. Like, it's weird because a lot of, like, the gays like to go to one bar. Uh, called Dave's, but then like all the drag shows are hosted at a different bar called Rick's because they have a bigger stage. And yeah. so like a lot of people don't even know, like I'll ask my friends, I'm like, hey, you want to go to the drag show? They're like, we have drag shows here? I'm like, every single month we have a drag show. <laughs> so those like, are those those two bars you mentioned, they're not gay bars? Neither of them are gay bars, no. Okay, so that's interesting. So here I would never see any of these bars that – if they're not the gay bar, not here. I, I act like I'm still in Tuscaloosa. So. <laughs> in Tuscaloosa, any bar that's not Icon, they're not going to do drag shows. They're not going to do gay events or anything like that. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. So going back, do you think like that gay culture has grown or do you think it's about the same? Um, okay. So I, yeah, when I, I wanted to tag on to the end of what you were saying, it's, it's, I think it has definitely grown. I think the amount of gay people is, is about the same. I just think that the acceptance of it, like society is changing really fast. When I started college compared to now, it is completely different. Um, like it's still like, you know, you still, it's still a little bit uncomfortable to have to come out to people and stuff like that, especially in the South. In the South, there's, we still have, there's still a very, very, very like strong mindset of what it means to be gay and yeah. how people take that. Yeah, it's definitely gotten a lot better and I think it's going to continue being a lot better I think in four years um, I don't know I think in four years it's probably going to be I don't want to say it's going to be 100% accepted but it's going to be close to that how is it down there is it um, are all of y'all like 
the gay guys. I'm like, obviously there's going to be closeted guys, but like when you go out, um, do you still find, do, do you still take a little hesitation to tell people that you're gay or like, do you, or, you know, if somebody asks you about it or if it comes up in conversation, are you completely fine just mentioning it? So for me, I've been out since my junior year of high school. So I've been out for four years now. Um, okay. so for me, like, it's like, it doesn't, it's not a single hesitation. It doesn't matter who I'm talking to. Um, it used to be like really bad, like, especially if I knew someone was like big into religion or something. But nowadays, like I usually bring it up super fast by being like, yeah, the guy that I used yeah. to talk to or like one of my okay. exes and just kind of like bring it up like that yeah. and kind of toss it aside. And I do still get a lot of faces. Um, do you? I get, yeah. a, I get a lot too, especially, you know, here on post, like even still, like when I have to, when I have to bring it up and I have to say my husband, like if I'm filing documents or something like that and I have to mention my husband, I do take, I, I am a little bit hesitant about it. Um, I do it. I just get it out of the way and I'm always, you know, nine times out of 10, nobody even bats an eyelash, but, yeah. um, definitely still get looks when I come through the gate to come on post, uh, a lot of the guys, like if me and Alistair are together, cause he has a military ID and I have a dependence ID. So obviously that sometimes they'll look at both of them, they'll look at us and then they'll hand it back. They won't, they won't, they're not rude about it, but yeah. cause they have to salute my husband. <laughs> I guess. So since you have like experiences going to visit Alistair up at like West Point, yeah. What was the what was the culture like? I guess when you were up there visiting him, could you notice a difference, or like since it was like a military school environment, was it still kind of the same? I think uh, because it was a military school environment, I don't. Nobody ever gave us any problems. Nobody ever gave us any shit. But um, I think that they're trained to be so alike that. There is no diversity there, really. Like aside from like skin color and stuff like that, um, nobody like you can't tell really who's gay. You can't, you know. But like when they go into New York City and stuff like that, everybody you, you really see personalities start to come out. And so, um, like he would take me to gay bars, and you know, I met a couple of his friends, and like nobody ever gave us any shit. Um, so I, I think up north. Up north and West Point are two completely separate things. Uh, yeah. So West Point is not really any geographical area, I would say, um, just because they have to be a certain way at West Point. So did you ever did you ever face any like discrimination in Tuscaloosa? Aside from my own friends, uh, not really. Like in any random people, I, I never experienced discrimination from random people it was always people i was closest to which is kind of the fucked up part no but like i would think that random people would be more likely to give me shit about being gay but like when i go out in public and like you know hold alistair's hand walking down the strip you know nobody really says anything like nobody's trying to cause problems i think a big misconception about tuscaloosa is that because it's so southern like baptist area um that everybody's gonna be giving you shit and stuff and really they're going to talk shit about you behind your back and guarantee it, but nobody's going to say anything to your face because um, that's just how Southern people are. <laughs> yeah. I guess kind of the same for Starkville. Um, so I, I faced more discrimination in the week and a half that I was in Seattle than I did. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. That's when I was that's here weird. in Starkville. So like here in Starkville, like honestly, I've been on dates with dudes like around town and like – the waitresses and like waiters, like usually they're like they're like happy for us, which is really strange. But I think that's the cool thing about like college towns is they're so diverse. You have so many people from so many different areas trying to come to like these schools, you know. And yeah. so you you've just got people from all walks of life. So it's not just the Southern Baptist people. Mm -hmm. But when I was up in Seattle, um, the guy that I was with, like he was still very much like fresh, like newly outed, like not really comfortable with things so like I would hold his hand in public and like I was just like it's totally fine like this is Seattle of all places um there was one dude that walked by and like started yelling at us and uh there was another lady that like dipped her sunglasses down and like made like an appalled face and it was just like stuff like that you it was weird to be that. in the north like the northwest especially like where you're supposed yeah. to be all end all like gay is accepted here and it like mm -hmm. still there are people everywhere and i think that's i mean that goes to show you yeah, that goes to show you that you can't really uh, you can't really you know prejudge a place like just because it's a southern college town doesn't mean that you know we don't have our own gay culture there that is accepted it doesn't mean that you know a place that's supposed to be really accepting like seattle is going to be entirely accepting so. yeah i like gay culture but at the same time i try not to live gay culture yeah. If that makes any sense. No, I understand that. Um, 
I think it just I hate I, I really kind of hate the words gay culture, gay yeah. community, all that because it's really not like that. What I think what we're you know sh- promoting to people is like you know that we all you know are in some sort of cult and some sort of clique and you know it's us against the world and it's not like that. I think there's just a lack of terminology for. Just us. I think, honestly, we're all just individuals, and, you know, individuals get along with who they get along with, and not all the gay guys get along with each other, and I don't get a like, get, uh, I don't get along with a lot of gay guys, um, and that's just because I don't get along with them, like, I don't get along with a lot of straight people, it's, if I vibe with you, I vibe with you, um, yeah. I am worried about, like, I want more gay friends, I would like more gay friends, because, um, me and Trent, like, we kind of started, we stopped talking for a little while, just not because we hated each other or anything. It's just we were in different points in our lives, um, and we never hung out. And then recently, in the past couple months, we started talking again more. And I really like having Trent in my life, and I like talking to him. And, like, he calls me up, and we just talk about funny things, and it's fun. How do you how do you meet guys? Okay, so when I was in Tuscaloosa, you would get on Grinder. That was my main way of meeting dudes for a long time. And every time I would go on Grinder, I'd talk to the same guys over and over and over and then I delete the app, get so over the app because I've already met everybody on there, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I would re-download the app maybe like a month or two later and I would see new pictures and I'd be like, oh, new guys. No, same guys, different pictures. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just the same damn thing. And so finally, um, I, like a little bit before my YouTube channel, uh, my YouTube channel was a great way to make me guys, but a little bit before my YouTube channel, I started going on Facebook and I would notice that any guys that I knew were gay in Tuscaloosa, other guys would be friends with. Um, and that's how I knew they were gay. So I'd always look at a dude's friends list on Facebook. So I started messaging a bunch of guys on Facebook and started talking to them, meeting up with them. Um, but like in Tuscaloosa, it's a very, very small pool of dudes. Yeah. Uh, either you talk to the same dudes over and over again, you deal with it. So how do you, how did you, how do you meet anybody, I guess? Because you're already, what is this, your senior year? Yeah, I'm, I'm going in my you senior just, year. You've met everybody. <laughs> so I met everybody. I met everybody uh, sophomore year for sure uh, after I was out um, and started hooking up with dudes for like the first time. Definitely Grinder is like still big here, but at the same time, like you do get on and you're like, I know this person, I know this person, I know this person. And then you yeah. delete and you re-download and you're like, maybe there's a new person. Or at the beginning of every semester, there's like the transfer students and the freshmen. And so you're just like, there's new, there's new people. I'm, I'm typically try not to like go younger than me, but of course, like for hookups, like, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so, um, but yeah, just like the new semesters, like always bring in new people to college towns and that's what I like about it. And then when I travel, um, I've always got like, I usually, I love Tinder. I do. I just, I've never really had anything serious come off of Tinder, but, um, like yeah. Tinder's great. I just like I love using like those kind of apps when I go places because you can find really great dudes places. But at the same time, like I'm still, as I said, like I'm very skeptical and I I like don't meet that many people that I'm actually like I actually will go on a date with you. You know, being gay needs to be more normal in like high schools and stuff like that, so that gay guys can be out and they can date each other and they don't have to fall into toxic relationships like that later in life because they'll know what to look out for. The straight people learn that stuff, you know, earlier than gay people do. Yeah. And it's just not fair because we get fucked over and that's why you find such a lack of monogamy in the gay community because, you know, everybody's letting loose for the first time at 40 years old. Yeah. Like that's fucking crazy. Yeah, just even now, I've only been in like two or three like serious relationships. So like when like I fall for a guy or like we start dating, like it is pretty like intense, and it's like yeah. very much like I I'm still learning, and it sucks because I yeah. feel I'm like 21 years old. Like you know, I've got experience in like all of these other things. Like I have like an official national yoga certification. I can teach yoga anywhere in the world, but I don't know how to like date boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's just like <laughs> that's something you're always gonna navigate though and when you meet somebody taylor when you meet somebody that you find it just it's gonna be easy with and it's just somebody that you can look in the face listen to what they're saying and know that they're telling you the exact thing that they're saying um like they're not they're not they don't have any other motives they're not thinking anything else other than what they're saying that's the, gonna be the person for you um Everybody else, you know, just enjoy the enjoy, enjoy the drama. It. I guess be a drama queen for a little bit, because um, <laughs> those are those are the like you know the passionate 
fiery relationships that are toxic, you know, those are fun for a little bit, but they're never going to last you. They're never going to be the relationships you want to be in permanently. So if you find yourself in one of those, be very, very careful. Take all the time you need. Don't look at it like 21, you know, stuff like that. I need to be married. (laughs) I I, I told myself uh, when I was 21, I remember having a conversation with Turner about this. I'm like, I'm going to be married by 24 and I want a kid by 27. Um, and that was fucking crazy to me. Like I never even thought it was actually going to happen. I think we were just joking about it. Um, then I got married by 24. I don't want a kid <laughs> <laughs> for a very long time, but it's just, it's weird how things work out. Um, when I- so quite honestly, that wasn't the full interview. As you can tell, there were parts edited out. Uh, there were jumps around and, uh, we got off topic a lot. We talked about a lot of different things. The full, uh, recording was over an hour and a half. So, um, just wanted to talk about like, you know, being gay in Southern college towns today. Uh, if this is the kind of thing that you like, you really want to see this kind of thing more often, like maybe me interview other YouTubers or, you know, anything like that. I love doing collaboration. So if this is what you want, like, you know, comment down below, let me know what you like. Let's give this video a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribe subscribe to Zach's channel because it's way better than mine so um, with that being said I uh, hope you guys have a great day uh, happy 4th of July in advanced uh, remember tomorrow is a new day today is a new adventure I will see you guys later